But I guess geriatric pregnancies really aren't good. It's sad when the child ends up with defects. Harry sneered at my wheelchair-bound daughter and me, alternating his gaze between us. My ex-husband Harry, who left me for another woman ten years ago, said with a smirk. Sean, my current husband, retorted, Do you have a problem with my daughter? As he glared at Harry. What? No, no way. Harry exclaimed looking toward the sky in disbelief as the truth of my happy remarried life became clear. I'm Maggie, a housewife in my 40s. Now I live a fulfilling life with my daughter Molly and my husband Sean, a stark contrast to the miserable life I endured until 10 years ago. I first got married at 25 to Harry, whom I met at the company where I worked after graduating from college. I was a receptionist and he was in sales at the same company. He started talking to me as we saw each other daily, and we naturally grew closer, going out for meals and movies after work, until one day he proposed during a date. He said, I'm so happy to have met someone like you. Will you marry me and continue this happiness? Yes, I'd be delighted. I replied, accepting immediately. My parents, living in the countryside, were thrilled about the marriage. I quit my job because my husband wanted me to stay home. Although, I initially thought it would be good to continue working, his view was different. You're a beautiful receptionist. You meet all sorts of people in sales with clients. I can't help but worry you might be tempted by someone. He argued. I could still earn and save money, and we might even have kids someday, I suggested. I'll earn enough for both of us, he insisted. He was quite possessive, even while we were dating. He disliked it when I gave small gifts for my vacation to a male colleague at work. After we married, I devoted myself to household duties, laundry, ironing, cooking, as much as I could for him. Initially, life with him was peaceful and comfortable. However, within a few months, our life together took a dark turn, mostly due to his behavior. He increasingly looked down on me, particularly lashing out when work didn't go well immediately complaining about dinner upon returning home. Hey, what's with today's dinner? This meager fish dinner? Um, we had meat yesterday, so I thought fish would be better for nutritional balance. I responded, As if fish could relieve my exhaustion. Forget it. Just bring me a beer already. Uh, sure. You wouldn't understand, since you're always at home, but I've had a tough day dealing with multiple clients. Right. I understand, sorry. I'll make your favorite dish tomorrow. You'd better. Even when I prepared his favorite meal, he often came home late due to sudden overtime or entertaining clients. I went through all this trouble to make your favorite. I muttered, disappointed, to which he retorted glaring at me. Don't act high and mighty when you don't even work. I didn't choose to be a stay-at-home wife. Maybe I should work too. We don't have kids yet. Is that okay? What? You need to take care of the house like you're supposed to. You're my wife. Support me. Then I'll look for a part-time job during the day. Fine, but don't slack on the housework. Luckily, there was a cashier part-time position available at a nearby supermarket, and I was hired immediately. However, his disdain continued. Hey, this shirt is all wrinkled. What's the deal? I did the laundry but it didn't dry well because of the bad weather yesterday. I'm about to iron it now. Don't slack off on the household chores. If you can't handle both, quit the part-time job. I felt more like a maid than a wife. Though he maintained a good facade outside, at home it was a different story. One day, he announced, We're going to my parents' house tomorrow, so prepare some gifts. Um, that's so sudden. I could have prepared something if you had told me sooner. That's why I'm telling you now. Or are you saying you can't prepare anything? It's not that, but I have my own things to deal with. Just a part-timer, acting all important. Make sure you prepare everything properly. Got it? I managed to prepare a suitable gift and went to his parents' house the next day. It turned out to be a celebration for the elementary school entrance of my brother-in-law's eldest son. I'm sorry, Maggie, for making you come all this way, his mother apologized. I should have brought something he would enjoy. 
It's just a family dinner. I told Harry that you guys didn't need to bring anything, but you know how thoughtful he is. You got him this gift, right? Thank you. She appreciated. At his family home, my husband played the role of the considerate younger son. Maggie recently started working part-time. She chose a place close to home, so it wouldn't affect the household chores. He boasted to his mother. It's hard work once you have kids. Exactly. That's why she should work now. Good thinking. You two are really on top of things. While chatting with his mother, my husband portrayed himself as a great son and a wonderful husband. His charming public facade meant I couldn't confide in anyone about him. When we returned from his parents' place, he snapped at me. Hey, can't you be a bit more attentive? Supporting your husband in public is a wife's duty, isn't it? What? I did bring the gifts as you asked. It's not about that. Playing with the kids or helping my mom, there's so much more a daughter-in-law should do. You're useless because you only do exactly what you're told. I... I'm sorry. I quietly apologized. After each visit to his family, I was lectured. This pattern continued after we got married, and I became increasingly withdrawn. I felt incompetent at household chores and couldn't take initiative. I only did what my husband told me. Over time, his constant belittling brainwashed me into thinking I was nothing more than a maid. I mechanically did my household duties and worked part-time during the day. Perhaps bored with me, my husband began coming home later. You've been coming home late recently. I've been busy with work. I wish you'd at least let me know when you'll be late. I need to prepare dinner, you know. What? My job in sales depends on client schedules, which is normal. Don't you get that? Despite my simple request for a heads up, I couldn't shake the feeling that his late nights weren't just about work. When I picked up his suit for dry cleaning, I smelled women's perfume, and he often returned from work smelling freshly showered, not sweaty, probably signs of an affair. But I lacked the courage to confront him. If we divorced, I'd have nowhere to go. My parents liked him, and if we split, they would certainly blame me. I rarely went out except for part-time work or shopping, so I didn't have friends to turn to. Despite knowing of his infidelity, I had turned a blind eye. Then one day, I realized I hadn't had my period for a while, and sometimes felt strangely nauseous. Could it be? I decided to tell my husband, thinking that if he knew I was pregnant, he might return to the family. He doted on his nephew, so I assumed he'd be happy to have his own child. Hey, I think I might be pregnant. What? He responded incredulously. I haven't had my period recently, and I feel like I might be experiencing morning sickness. You're joking, right? Even if it's true, you should consider not having it. Why? What do you mean? I asked, confused. Because you're 35. And? Geriatric pregnancies are risky. The baby might not be born healthy, or worse, could have complications. What? Besides, I don't want to raise a child with you. Maybe we should just split up. Why would you say that? You love kids. You adore your nephew. Nah, I just pretend to like him. I don't actually like kids. I hate crying babies. How can you say such things? I thought of you as just a maid, but if you're pregnant, you're useless to me. You know I have another woman. It's easier to live with her. Stunned, I asked. Uh, are you going to leave me? With a smirk, he replied. You know how they say it's time to replace electrical appliances after ten years? Well, we've been married for ten years, so maybe it's time to replace a wife, too. I had no idea he would say such heartless things. He then coldly added, I'm going to her place now. I'll send the divorce papers soon, so sign them and file them for me. Are we really getting a divorce? If there's anything wrong with me, I'll change. Huh? Wrong with you? Your very existence is the worst. Do whatever you want with the kid. Have it or not have it, although you probably can't afford to raise it on your own. <laughs> he said derisively.
and then he left, hurling insults as he went. Left alone, I broke down in tears. What had I done wrong? I had done everything he asked of me at home, and I hadn't been a burden. Suddenly, he wanted a divorce. What could I possibly tell my parents? And with a potential child on the way, what was I supposed to do? These thoughts swirled in my mind, and I withdrew into myself. A few days later, I heard the front door open. Hey, anyone home? Doesn't seem like it. A woman's voice replied. A woman in a miniskirt, heavy makeup, and a sharp look clung to my husband. Yikes, you scared me. Thought you were trash. She exclaimed upon noticing me crumpled on the living room sofa. She looks like a ghost. How could you even stay with her? True, she really does look like a ghost. He agreed. Betrayed and brainwashed, all I could mutter was a feeble. You came back for me? As if I would. I just came to get my stuff and brought the divorce papers. Here. He said, throwing the filled out divorce papers at me. As I looked at them, nausea overwhelmed me, and I rushed to the bathroom. I don't want to live here, the mistress whined. Her disgusting smell is all over. Shall we find a new place? Yeah, let's go talk to a realtor. As I suffered in the bathroom, Harry said, Find the divorce papers quickly and get out of this house. Got it? Then he and the woman left the house. After crying for a while, I became curious about the pregnancy. I went to the gynecologist and found out I wasn't pregnant after all. My missed periods and nausea were due to hormonal imbalances caused by stress. Realizing my supposed pregnancy was a misunderstanding actually freed me, giving me a chance to reflect on my life and escape the brainwashing and control of Harry. I moved out of the house we shared and, of course, filed for divorce. Although I could have demanded alimony since the divorce was largely his fault, I decided it wasn't worth the hassle. My ex thinks he discarded me, but I felt just as relieved to be rid of him and vowed to prove myself in my new life. When I told my parents about the divorce, they initially blamed me for being rash, but they understood once I explained the infidelity. Meanwhile, I continued my part-time job and pondered my future, unaware of the unexpected life awaiting me. Ten years later, I was out shopping and enjoying the day with my daughter Molly on her birthday. We planned to buy the clothes she wanted and go to a cake buffet, but our perfect day was marred by running into the worst possible person, my ex-husband Harry, who was with another woman, not the one he had cheated with. Hey, long time no see, he said, smirking as he approached and then commenting on seeing my daughter. I guess geriatric pregnancies really aren't good. It's sad when the child ends up with defects. What? My daughter was nine years old, using a wheelchair due to a prosthetic leg from a traffic accident. What are you talking about? I asked, wondering if he was confused. Isn't she the child from that time? Poor parenting, I guess, he said to my daughter. Noticing our exchange, my current husband, Sean, came to stand by my daughter's side. Dad, what's going on? Molly asked, looking puzzled at Sean, which made Harry's face change color. Do you have some business with my wife and daughter? Sean asked calmly, though I could tell he was quite angry. Your wife and daughter? Yes. No, no, she's my ex-wife, and this child is mine and hers. This child is my daughter. Is there a problem? Harry looked confused as he said, What? Maybe we should talk somewhere more private. Do you have time? Sean suggested, and reluctantly, Harry agreed. My office is nearby. We can talk there. It'll be quieter. The woman with my ex-husband left the scene, looking annoyed. As Sean led Harry to his company building, Harry turned pale. This place, it's the parent company of my employer. Oh, is that so? And what's the name of your company? When Harry answered, Sean smiled. Ah, that's the one we acquired in a recent merger and acquisition. Harry, realizing his blunder, shrunk back. Oh, I had no idea. We should include this in our conversation. Let's go to the president's office. 
It was a weekday, so the office was busy with employees, and we walked past them to the president's office. I had made arrangements for my daughter in the wheelchair with the secretary. Sean began, So, where should we start? You are the ex-husband of my wife, correct? Yes. I've heard about your marriage. You left her because of an affair? Left her? That sounds harsh. Harry flustered at Sean's accurate words. Forgot already? You said you were dumping me. I interjected, unable to stay silent. I was not the same woman I used to be, and I wouldn't remain quiet after he insulted our daughter like that. That was a peaceful divorce. You filed the divorce papers without fuss. Exactly, so you have no right to complain about me now. I mean, it's amazing. What do you mean? That you managed to marry a president with baggage after being dumped by me. Baggage? Well, isn't she my child? Weren't you pregnant at the time of our divorce? What? Harry seemed convinced that our daughter with the prosthetic leg was his biological child. It's unfortunate she was born with disabilities due to an advanced maternal age, but she's in good hands now that her new dad is a president. What the hell are you talking about? She's not yours. What? It meshes up with her age. Or are you saying you were involved with this man even back then? That's not the case. Sean interjected, joining our argument. I'm also remarried, and she's my daughter from my previous marriage. Then what's with the prosthetic leg and wheelchair? Sean carefully explained. Ah, she lost her leg in a traffic accident a few years ago. And Maggie here was the one who took care of her at the time. Indeed, after my divorce, I chose a new path as a counselor. Realizing how manipulated I had been by Harry, I studied to become a psychological counselor to stabilize my own mental health. I earned my certification and worked at a welfare facility, aiming to support others like me, and that's where I met this girl just after her accident. She was struggling with the loss of her leg. Her mother had passed away, and her father, my current husband, was trying to open her heart, but it was challenging, and she was receiving rehabilitation at the facility. She loved novels, often reading mature stories beyond her years which is how we started talking, as I was reading the same book. Gradually, she opened up to me, and naturally, I got to know her father more, leading to our marriage. So, what about that child from that time? Did you not have it? He pressed for an answer. The pregnancy was a mistake. Huh? He was taken aback. By the way, you work for a subsidiary of my husband's company, right? Sean, my husband, elaborated. Yes, actually, our company recently acquired his, and we're collaborating on a children's project. He said this while glaring at Harry. Yes, yes, that's right. I'm in charge of that project. What a coincidence. Harry stammered, clearly uncomfortable. Then I'm afraid we'll have to remove you from the project. What? Harry was shocked by the sudden exclusion from the project announced by the president of the parent company. I'll talk to your department head and have you removed from this project moving forward. Harry turned pale. Mr. President, involving personal issues in work matters, how is that appropriate? I'm not removing you for personal reasons. This project is critical for our company and it represents a big opportunity for me. Please don't ruin my life plans, President. He pleaded desperately. I understand that. The woman you were with earlier is your company president's daughter, isn't she? I don't know how you convinced her, but it seems like you were trying to ingratiate yourself into the president's family. Sean seemed to have guessed Harry's intentions correctly. You see, it's just a man's ambition to rise up. This project is exactly that chance. Please let me work on it, setting aside personal feelings. Do you understand what this project is about? It aims to promote better moral education for children. Of course I understand that. Yet you were willing to make discriminatory remarks about my daughter who is only nine years old. I can't trust someone who doesn't consider a child's feelings to lead this work. But, but if you do that, not only will I miss out on a promotion, but I might not even be able to stay at the company. Please stop this. Forgive me. I just slipped up thinking she was my own child. Even if she were your child, you shouldn't say things like defective. 
Hey, help me out here. Harry turned to me, crying for help. What are you talking about? You reap what you sow. You being with that child caused this mess. What are you going to do about it? He accused irrationally. It's all your fault. Everything would have been fine if I hadn't met you. What have you done? He said, despite it all being his own doing. Seeing him so desperate, Sean pressed harder. If you continue to verbally abuse us, I will have to report everything, not just to your department head, but also to the president, who is the father of the lady you were with. If you don't want to get fired, reflect on your actions and come back better prepared. Harry hung his head and slinked away, tail between his legs. Then Sean turned to me with a smile and said, Let's go home. The celebration for my daughter's birthday turned out a bit different than planned, but she was all smiles and very happy. As for Harry, after being removed from the project for his discriminatory comments towards children, the reason became well known within the company and he was pushed into a less important role. He even incurred the wrath of the president, who was the father of the woman he was dating, and was given a restraining order. Shunned by the others, he became distrustful of people, and eventually left the company, now living reclusively at home. A pitiful situation, but entirely of his own making. As for me, I've been living happily since then. My daughter has gotten used to her prosthetic, and is nearing the end of her wheelchair-bound days. She even seems to have a boyfriend at school. The new project at my husband's company was selected by the Ministry of Education and is being used in moral education classes in elementary and middle schools nationwide. I'm working as a key member of that project and am being considered for an executive position in the company. And I must clarify, it's not because of favoritism for my husband. Because of the incident on her birthday, we plan to go all out on our next wedding anniversary with a family trip to refresh ourselves thoroughly. We're thinking about Europe or Hawaii. It's fun to ponder such decisions 